The Boys of Summer, 1972, stands as a non-fiction masterpiece in the realm of baseball literature, crafted by the skilled American sports journalist Roger Kahn. This work is more than a mere recollection of Kahn's youthful enthusiasm for the sport and his later career as a sports reporter. It delves deeply into the history of the Brooklyn Dodgers during the pivotal years of 1952 to 1953. The concluding section of the book takes on a contemplative tone, reflecting on the passage of time and the aging process. Within this context, Khan delves into the subsequent trajectories of the Dodgers' shining stars, including Clem Labini, George Shuba, Carl Erskine, Andy Pafko, Joe Black, Preacher Rowe, Pee Wee Reese, Carl Furillo, Gil Hodges, Roy Campanella, Duke Snyder, Billy Cox, and the legendary Jackie Robinson. Khan's narrative commences with his own childhood in the borough of Brooklyn. His all-consuming love for baseball, with a distinct emphasis on the Dodgers, was kindled by the fervor of his sports-minded father, much to the chagrin of his classicist mother. An epical moment in Khan's youth arrived during what he terms the summer of tragedy when he realized, at the tender age of 11, that he would never ascend to the level of prowess necessary to join the Dodgers' ranks as a player. Instead, his talents lay in the realm of writing. In 1948, he secured a position as a copy boy at the New York Herald Tribune, igniting his gradual ascent through the paper's ranks. With time, Kahn's skills as a writer flourished, as he gleaned wisdom from seasoned sports reporters while navigating long hours, tight headlines, and ceaseless travel. He understood that his innate talent needed to be coupled with unwavering dedication to reach the zenith of his craft. Khan doesn't belabor the point, yet during these same years, the young athletes who would ultimately form the core of the 1952-1953 Dodgers team were undergoing their own uncelebrated apprenticeships, steadily progressing through the ranks of the sport. By 1952, Khan's unrelenting passion for the Dodgers culminated in a career-defining opportunity, his dream role as a beat reporter for the Tribune, covering his cherished team. In the Dodgers' inner sanctum, Khan observed the players up close, studying their personalities and emotional states. In this realm, he achieved the major league status of his profession, experiencing the pinnacle of his journalistic journey. In The Boys of Summer, Khan masterfully captures the essence of those years in a warm and nostalgic embrace, offering intricate and affectionate portraits of the Dodgers stars, both on the field and behind the clubhouse doors. While the Dodgers would later triumph in the 1955 World Series, Khan's tenure as a beat reporter coincided with their World Series losses to the Yankees. Paradoxically, these defeats forged an even deeper connection between Khan and the team he chronicled, as he famously declared, you may glory in a team triumphant, but you fall in love with a team in defeat. Amid the vibrant backdrop of the 52-53 Dodgers, one story resonates most powerfully, the tale of Jackie Robinson. Robinson's narrative stands as the enduring cornerstone of the team's legacy. In 1947, he shattered the racial barrier that had long segregated Major League Baseball, challenging the unofficial gentleman's agreement. Khan lays bare the intricacies of the prejudice faced by Robinson and his fellow African-American players. Robinson was consistently denied the same accommodations as his white teammates, from hotels to transportation. His daily existence was marked by a barrage of abuse from opposing fans, players, and dishearteningly, sometimes even from his own fans and teammates. Khan's candor extends to his own journalistic missteps. When Robinson accused players from the St. Louis Cardinals of racial abuse, Khan initially accepted the denial of Cardinals manager Ed Stanky. His subsequent article sought a balanced perspective, teetering on whether the abuse had truly occurred. Eventually, Khan came to realize that he had been deceived and manipulated, and he sought to rectify his approach by more accurately reporting the challenges Robinson faced. However, his efforts were hindered by his editor, who insisted that the Herald Tribune focus solely on baseball rather than delve into issues of race. Khan's efforts were thwarted, as the directive rang out, write baseball, not race relations. Story Killed the book's final third reflects on the Dodgers' ongoing journey, marking the passing of time while allowing the legacy of these legendary players to continue shaping the narrative. Only a few years subsequent to their triumphant World Series victory in 55, both the Dodgers and the Giants made their way to the West Coast, leaving behind a transformed landscape. Ebbets Field, the sacred site of Khan's cherished childhood memories, gave way to sterile, red-brick structures. 
Two decades after the culmination of the 53 season, Khan embarks on a journey to reunite with the surviving members of the team. Among them, Gil Hodges serves as the manager of the Mets, while Robinson grapples with illness, he would later pass away that same year. The rest of the team has transitioned back into civilian life. Khan discovers that they are disinclined to indulge in nostalgia or bask in their past glories. Instead, their reflections center on simpler aspects of life. Clem Labini predominantly recalls the longing he experienced for his family during his time on the road. George Shuba emphasizes the value of unrelenting discipline and relentless effort over innate talent. Andy Pafko still carries the sting of being traded, and Carl Furillo's memories are tainted by his lawsuit against the Dodgers' owners, a battle that ultimately led to his ostracization from the baseball community. As the years have advanced, these men have not remained untouched by the passage of time. Their faces bear the marks of age, and the challenges of life have exacted their toll. Gil Hodges grapples with a heart condition, while Clem Labini's son has borne the scars of the Vietnam War. The Boys of Summer transcends the realm of a mere baseball account, it transforms into a contemplation of heroism and the inexorable march of mortality. A 2011 compilation by the LA Times, ranking the most pivotal baseball books in history, dubbed it perhaps the most celebrated baseball book of the last 50 years. Nonetheless, certain critics have accused it of veering into excessive sentimentality. The book's title is derived from a verse penned by poet Dylan Thomas, who poignantly referred to the boys of summer in their ruin. I hope you enjoyed this video, leave a like if you did, and be sure to subscribe thank you.